who you are. In bravery, you are the lion of your Lord. But in generosity, who knows who you are? That's why fittingly when you see his moral features in that period of the Khilafah, you find that after the battle of Nahrawan, only in these five years we're looking at his moral character, battle of Nahrawan, the Khawarij have fought him. He returns after having defeated them. He is walking in the street. There is an old lady sitting down making food. It's an oft narrated story, but it helps us in memory. She is trying to cook some food. He comes near her. Take this on board, brothers and sisters, in your own life and listen to his character. He comes near her. She says, may God curse Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why? He takes my brothers and my husband to war. They die and he remains alive. May God curse him for his acts in Nahrawan. Amir al-Mu'mineen is taken back. He's like, no, I'm sure he's not that bad. She hasn't recognized him. So Amir al-Mu'mineen says to her, he says, and how are you coping without your family? And she replies, it is difficult. When they are not here, who is there to bring us food? I have to cook in the middle of the night. The children think some food is coming, but they go to sleep on empty stomachs. All because of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amir al-Mu'mineen says to her, is there any way I can help you? She says, no, you are a generous man, but I can fend for myself. He says, no, let me do one thing for you. Do you mind if I come every morning and I lift the wheat and I lift the bread and I carry it from section to section and I make it for you? She says, that is very kind of you, do not worry. He says, no, no, I will do this, let me do this. Ali ibn Abi Talib would come every morning carrying this. Imagine a man on the battlefield is a warrior. Look how humble he is off the battlefield. He comes every morning, he carries the bread, the wheat, and he makes the bread every morning. Until one morning, her daughter happens to come home. Her daughter has been away. She happens to come home. As she's walking in, she sees Ali ibn Abi Talib leaving. Now she's thinking to herself, you know, was that Ali ibn Abi Talib I just saw? And she comes to her mother, she says, Mother, do you know who that man was who was in our house? She said, no, he's a generous man, but I haven't caught his name. She says, that was Ali ibn Abi Talib. At that moment, the mother runs towards Amir al-Mu'mineen. She falls at his feet. She says, I plead with you to forgive me for my insulting ways with you. If it was the imagination, Ali ibn Abi Talib could say, I, the one who's lifted Khaybar, I, the one who defeated Amr ibn Awad at Khanda, I, who killed half of those at Badr, who are you to come and speak like this to me? Yet his reason said, I'm sure the lady didn't have the correct knowledge about who I am. So do you know what he did? He didn't just stop there. He said, no, O oh lady, I ask you to forgive me, that maybe for a moment in your life I may have hurt you. Please forgive me if in any way I insulted you or took away your family members. Look at the akhlaq that is built by Amir al-Mu'mineen. Furthermore, in his time as Khalifa, many people used to come and ask him questions. Amongst them the Christians, amongst them the Jews. His akhlaq could have easily said, I'm not bothered for your questions, please go away, you are non-Muslims. No. Ali ibn Abi Talib taught us, if a person is not your brother in faith, he is your equal in humanity. That if he, you may not agree with him about certain parts of history, still open the doors for him that you consult each other. So what happened was, he would walk in the streets of Kufa and he sees a Christian man who is begging. Do you know what Amir al-Mu'mineen said? When he saw the Christian man begging, he sat next to the man. He looked at his companions. He said to them, how dare we use this man when he was young to look after the Islamic State. And now that he has become old, this Christian man has no one to provide him with food in the depths of the night. And no one to provide him with shelter in the heat of the day. At this moment, do you know what happens? They all come near him. He says, I want each of you to make sure that you look after this Christian man. If he needs help, give him help. If he needs food, give him food. If he needs someone to carry him because he is old, then let someone carry him. I cannot bear to see a human being in my time as Khalifa full of poverty. And therefore he was receptive towards all sorts. That's one thing people do not know about his Khalifa was the number of Jews and Christians who became Shia. Those of you who study the annals in history, do you know how many Jews and Christians came towards Islam because of Ali ibn Abi Talib's five years? 
Because you know what their words were? We had not seen Islam for 25 years until the son of Abu Talib became Khalifa. And they said his name is written in our books. To the extent that he would open his doors to the Jews every time. Although they were the very people who fought him and wanted revenge. On one occasion a Jewish man comes in. He says, where is Ali ibn Abi Talib? We hear he is God's representative on earth. And that he carries the treasure of the morals of Muhammad. Where is he? They said, he is there. He walked in and he saw him. He said, Ali, I have some questions to ask. Which no one replied back to me since Muhammad died. Since the Prophet died, no one has replied. Can I ask you them and can you answer them? He said, go ahead, ask, ask me the questions. Ali ibn Abi Talib would be receptive. The man said to him, what is one? What is two? What is three? What is four? What is five? What is six? What is seven? What is eight? What is nine? What is ten? What is eleven? What is twelve? What is twenty? What is thirty? What is fifty? What is sixty? What is seventy? What is eighty? What is ninety-nine? And what is a hundred? Now you would think this is one of those I'll get back to you questions, you know, the ones you never get back to. But here in this situation, Amir al-Mu'mineen shows his humility. He says, one is God, two is Adam and Eve, three are the substances, four are the heavenly books, five are the daily prayers, six is the periods in which the heavens and the earth were created, seven is... وَجَعَلْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا Eight is the angels who carry the throne. Nine are the signs Allah gave to Moses. Ten is the extra days Allah made Moses stay at Sinai. Eleven are the brothers of Prophet Yusuf. Twelve are the springs of Musa. Twenty is when Allah says in the Quran, if there is twenty of you who are patient, you will defeat a hundred. Thirty, two hundred. Thirty is what is when Musa was at Sinai for thirty days. Fifty, he says, one day is like 50,000 years on the day of judgment. Sixty, as a kafara feeds 60 poor people. Seventy is the number of men Musa took towards Sinai in order to meet the Lord. Eighty is if you accuse someone of adultery but you don't have four witnesses, you have to whip them eighty times. Ninety-nine is in the story of David when he had to just judge in the Quran about the ninety-nine sheep and the person who had one sheep. And a hundred is the number of whips. Which you give a person who has engaged in adultery. At this moment the person said, This is the treasure of the Prophet I've been looking for. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, wa ashhadu anna aliyan waliyullah. That's why. When he died, Two pieces of morality emerged which the world lost. Number one, when Ibn Muljim struck him. When Ibn Muljim struck him, what do we find? We find that he orders that the drink is given to his killer first before himself. He says, I cannot bear to see Ibn Muljim thirsty. He is in fear about what he has just done. Please give him the drink first. Number two, remove the ropes from the hands of Ibn Muljim. Can you not see that he is in pain? And number three, he tells Imam Hassan, do not mutilate his body. Because he struck me with one, you strike him with one. Rasulullah used to say, I do not even like to see the rabid dog mutilated. Fittingly as a conclusion, we find that when Imam Hassan had buried him, Imam Hassan narrates, when me and Aba Abdullah were walking back, having just buried him, he said, we were walking back, there was an old man in front of us. The old man was crying and crying and crying. We said to him, why do you cry? Listen to his reply, brothers and sisters. Take this into your life. Hold on to the wilaya of Amir al muminin Why do you cry? Listen to the reply. He says, every night in my life, there used to be a man who would come in the middle of the night and give me food when everyone else was asleep. I never got his name and I never recognized him. I would always wonder where he is because for the past three nights he hasn't come to see me. I do not know what has happened to him. At least let me see him so I can thank him. Imam Hassan narrates at this moment Abba Abdullah began to cry incessantly and may our lives be torn apart for Abba Abdullah when he just gives a little tear, let alone when he cries incessantly. Abba Abdullah looked at him and looked at Imam Hassan. Imam Hassan said, that was our father. He used to come in the middle of the night and give you food. Yet he didn't seek acknowledgement. All he wanted to build was the idea that when there is a morally correct leader at the helm, 